Hey, what's happening, guys? So the synthesizer experiments continue. What we've got here is a little synth based on an idea called the Atari Punk console. And it's a pretty simple little device. Let's uh, take a look at the schematic and how it works. If I can get the battery off. There we go. So here's our schematic for it. Ignore that. That's blacked out. That was my mistake when I was drawing this. Now, like I said, this is called the Atari Punk console, or based on the Atari Punk console. And it uses either two 555 timers, or in this case, I'm using a single 556, which is a dual 555. The, this original circuit came out in 1980, and it was called the Sound Synthesizer. And it was published in Radio Shack's booklet, The Engineer's Notebook Integrated Circuit Applications. It was also called the Step Tone Generator in one of Forrest Mims' books. And it was called the Atari because it just makes low-tech sounds, kind of like an old Atari 2600. <laughs> now what it does is it produces an A-stable square wave oscillator. And that's coming out of the first 555 timer, which is the uh, low number pins. And that goes through a uh, stable oscillator that will control the width of the pulse. So if we look here at the 556 timer, you can see it's a 14 pin chip. And like I said, it is just two 555s. So pin one, discharge A, threshold A. Control A, reset A, out A, and trigger A, and pin 7 is ground. Then we come up to the top side, which is our second 555. We have our trigger B, output B, reset B, control B, threshold, discharge, and pin 14 is our VCC. So what we need to do is connect a couple of things together to make this work how we want it to. If we look at the circuit here, you can see we have connected pin 5 to pin 8 and that is our major connection because pin 5 is the output of circuit A and it goes to the trigger of circuit B. Now pin 12 is our threshold for B and pin 2 is our threshold for A and you see they both have capacitors on them going over to a potentiometer which is just hooked up as a uh, variable resistor. That gives us our RC constant for our timing. Then this capacitor over here, the electrolytic, is simply a DC blocking, so we don't put any DC into our speaker. And then we have the other side of the speaker going to ground. And I'm powering this with a nine volt battery. So you can see it's, it's really a simple circuit here. These are our two um, control potentiometers. This one controls the frequency, this one controls the pulse width, and this is our volume. Here we have our resistor and our capacitor that are controlling the, um, the frequency on output A. Also using this resistor, these two are in series so that we can control the frequency up and down and then over here we have our pulse width there is our DC blocking capacitor I mean there's our 556 five, and you can see pins 5 and 8 are connected together also pins 2 which is our threshold and our trigger on pin 6 just like in the 555 five, really easy to set it up why don't we put this on the oscilloscope and see what this waveform looks like okay I've hooked up the oscilloscope probes through the speaker. I know they should be hooked up closer to the circuit, but uh, this is what we're dealing with today. And then we can come up here and check out the scope. Maybe if I can get it in frame and 
focused, right? Uh-oh. Focus. I guess that's as good a focus as we'll get. All right, so now we're seeing the waves on the screen. I can't get it stable no matter what I do. And if we turn the uh, pulse width oscillator, you can see our pulses change. But our frequency remains relatively stable, I mean. And we can get all sorts of neat little squawks and squeaks out of this. If I stop this, we can get a better look here. Let me run it for a second. There you go. You can see we're supposed to be getting uh, square waves. We're getting something close to a square wave. We don't see that capacitive discharge or anything. But it is uh, an interesting looking waveform. You see we have a little bit of discontinuity here. Then we've got that high spike, the attack. Then the sustain drops off, and then we're back into it. So it's a it's a rather neat looking signal. But here's the circuit again, and uh, you know there's the schematic. There's really nothing to it. You can do the same thing with two five five fives. As I turn this pulse width one, you can hear a little bit of phasing going on in there. Hear that? So that's kind of neat. Anyway, like I've said many times, I'm not an audio engineer. This is not my thing. These are simply experiments. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.